I've been kind of watching you a little bit since June when you went up to the mic at the Loudoun County School Board and had some strong words to say about trends that you were seeing that reminded you of something you experienced back in China, the Cultural Revolution, in fact. I guess I want to kind of dig into this whole realm. This is our opportunity to kind of do a little bit of a deeper dive into what you saw and what you're seeing now and actually what's happened since and a little bit of your background. You're you're from communist China. <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah. Um, so I grew up in communist China uh, and uh, I left China for America when I was 26. And when the Cultural Revolution started, I was a first grader, and I spent my entire school years in the uh, Cultural Revolution. And uh, after that, I was sent to the countryside to work in the fields to receive re-education from the peasants, like many, many uh, urban youth. So I always say I had a full experience of the Cultural Revolution. Well, and. It just as an interesting aside, so and then I guess a couple of years after you uh, were sent into the countryside, so to speak, but the, the whole policy actually changed, right? Yes, yeah. thank goodness. Uh, it's my third year and Deng Xiaoping was in power and he said, yeah, we, we need to start it to send youth to uh, college by examination. Before, it's not by examination, it's by good behavior and uh, yeah, it's by uh, uh, chosen by the party leaders. So he said, now it's by your ability. Mm. So I was able to um, pass the examination mm. and I went to college to study English. Why don't we start with a little bit about what the Cultural Revolution was, and then we'll, we'll get into the, the current day. But mm -hmm. think, what, what, what was that? And then you can tell me what it was like to be there. Yeah, the Cultural Revolution is uh, it, it's very important to understand why there was a Cultural Revolution. And I did not understand until much later. Um, so there were a lot of disastrous policies that Mao implemented before the Cultural Revolution. And one of them um, resulted in the uh, uh, famine of some 40 um, million people uh, starved to death. And uh, so there was some kind of a criticism inside the party, and there was some questioning about his leadership. So he felt like uh, his absolute power was uh, in question. So that's the reason. That's the reason he started the Cultural Revolution, to basically remove his political enemies and a political enemy up and down. And then the number one was the president of China, Liu Shaoqi, and it goes to the bottom of uh, our local government. They all need to be um, removed. And he wanted to put his own people mm. in every level. And that's um, the reason and uh, um, the means that he used to, uh, to get the mass involved. And then the first one was unleash the Red Guards. Mm. So those are the uh, indoctrinated youth uh, in colleges and universities. And it started uh, in Beijing and then quickly spread over. So the Red Guards uh, were mainly uh, school kids. So they, okay, since so you said the mass involved, so like just yeah. like kind of the masses, yeah. right? To, yeah. to, and basically employ them in his in his quest. So, and the Red Guards, how were they indoctrinated? Um, well, <laughs> that start from day one. So, as soon as um, uh, the CCP took over power in 1949, one of the first thing they did is to get all the uh, school teachers um, together because they were the, the teachers of the old China. So they were giving intensive uh, communist. Uh, training hmm. to learn about uh, Marxism, to learn about uh, the uh, communist ideology. And uh, they were not even giving weekend off. They have to be trained day and night until they pass examinations before they could go back to the classroom. Hmm. So, so they were uh, there to uh, teach now the uh, Marxist and communist values and ideologies. So ever since then, the educational system is an indoctrination meal ever since then. But it was during the Cultural Revolution that we get to see the full display of what those indoctrinated kids were mm. 
able to do, were capable of. And so to that, the Cultural Revolution was a really stunning um, uh, experience for, uh, for people who are in that um, a revolution and for people later to see. It was something that if I tell um, young people in China today, and most of them say, I just could not believe that happened. Well, so well, tell me a few memories of, of what you what you saw happen. I was uh, a first grader, so I was six or seven. I had one semester of kind of normal education. Um, so, and then to me, my memory is just overnight. Overnight, and then the school sto uh, class stopped, and I see the red, it's called a uh, big character posters everywhere. Mm. So those are just uh, uh, people write down um, whatever criticism, that's the uh, Chinese word for it, but it is really denunciation and attack of uh, um, teachers, of uh, school administrators, and of each other. And so anywhere there was a war place, uh, space, there's a big character posters. Mm. And uh, so I was just too little to really understand the content. But what I remember is the uh, chaos. And uh, so in the uh, classroom, and uh, uh, there is a, uh, the teacher wrote uh, a note in the blackboard said, uh, uh, no school for three days. And that uh, uh, stayed there for three, uh, two years. No school for two years. Yeah, so um, uh, when I went back to uh, school, that I was in the fourth grade. So I missed the second and third grade, no school. Fascinating. So just, you know, you got a, you basically got a, what, a semester, did you say? One or, semester, or what, what yeah. Semester, yeah uh -huh. And then school went out. Yeah, just out. And uh, um, universities, I think, they um, stopped for like five years or longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so who, and who were these Red Guards? Were they the, the sort of the extra committed youth or how, how did they come about? The, everyone was a Red Guard. If you're in high school, and even the, uh, in elementary school, we're just too little, but we're called the Little Red Guards. Mm -hmm. But they were all um, organized by themselves because Mao openly supported them. And, uh, and they just chanted Mao's uh, slogan, rebellion is justified. And, uh, and Mao said, revolution is not dinner party. And it is violent, so go ahead, do your revolution. So with Mao's uh, um, approval, mm. no one could stop them. So the first thing they did is uh, they dismantled the uh, law enforcement and the court system. So um, they just did whatever. They even make up their own um, uh, laws. So one of the things they, uh, they were told is get rid of those people in authority. Mm. And who are the people in authority? The first are the teachers. So many teachers were struggled against, parade mm. around, and uh, many were beaten, some to death. Mm. Yes, and uh, so because it, uh, I was uh, in the elementary school, just like seven year old, and up to, I don't know, 10, 12 years old, even that, eventually it gets violent. And, uh, um, but not, I, I don't think anyone killed in by elementary school teachers, but People were killed by middle school kids. Yeah, there was no consequence. And because of that, um, um, they just made up, made up their own rule. I heard this not from me, but heard from an, uh, some other, uh, as another person who witnessed the beaten to death of a man who dared to withdraw 1,000 yuan from the bank because the Red Guard said that if you have that much money, you are oppressor, you are exploiter, mm. so you are counter-revolutionary. So they just did that. No consequence, even today. The, uh, their crimes were never prosecuted. Those people who died, died in vain, forgotten, except by their families. And so in these, you know, you're talking about this struggling, and so I guess these posters were also sort of encouraging people to, to join in these struggle sessions. What, yeah. Just explain what that is exactly. The struggle session was just total confusion to me because there was no school and we just went out and every day there was a struggle session of uh, uh, someone. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, one day I was out with a, a friend of mine 
and so usually they a different some just just use truck to parade the people and with the sign of the name crossed out and so one day we were there and we looked the worst down that's my friend father and uh, so it's like a I don't know who and it's just so many people were struggled against and uh, some were very violent and I went to one struggle session of the uh, governor of Sichuan province that's where I'm from mm -hmm. and I was kind of far from uh, 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 he was standing somewhere high and then uh, so everyone could see him and the red guards were reading out his uh, whatever criticism or denunciation and uh, yeah total total chaos that's and I mean it's incredible to to hear about it from someone that that really experienced it of course I've read a lot about yeah. about the cultural revolution um, and then so we then but but you did get older in the process this lasted so the 10 years of, yes uh, yeah. and so what about towards you know you were seeing things presumably a bit more clearly towards the you know when you were 15 16 or it was just this mass chaos all the way through i don't think i ever clearly saw anything mm. and so i remember that I, I was sent to the countryside by then we heard enough horror stories of uh, uh, youth w working the countryside and work uh, with the peasants and uh, i did not really want to go but i had to so a lot of times actually i was blaming myself that i was just kind of weak that I just can't, uh, uh, that I need to be toughened up so that I can contribute meaningfully for the socialist cause. Mm. So a lot of times, it's not like I saw clearly that uh, uh, this was unjust. Mm -hmm. I, you know, that's sure. the power of indoctrination. You feel like, oh, you know, I'm just so weak. I really need to be toughened up by those peasants and do this hard labor. I see. So you're basically you're imagining that the people who are doing running the struggle sessions were the tough ones yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, <don't... laughs> I know the indoctrination was uh, very powerful. And uh, so the, the violence and then the kind of uh, uh, struggle session that lasted about two years. Actually, by the time I went back to school, uh, it was kind of calmed down. Calmed down, yeah, but uh, Mao just did not know what to do with all this uh, uh, red guards. That's what he did to send them to the countryside. <laughs> so that's the uh, uh, awards, uh, uh, rewards of uh, doing uh, uh, all this damage for Mao. Right. And I mean, the other part, and I just I have to mention was was the sort of destruction of history, mm -hmm. actually, right, which is a that's a central feature. That's the central feature of the Cultural Revolution. And so Mao told uh, the Red Guards and everybody, we should get rid of uh, the four odes, the old uh, ideas, old thoughts, uh, and old uh, tradition, old custom and old habits. What are they? They are the uh, traditional culture and civilization. So um, for you to get rid of it is to find um, historic uh, places such as temples and uh, uh, anything, basically anything old. So all the uh, Buddhist uh, uh, statues were torn down, temples destroyed or burned. And uh, but what I witness is red guards going door to door to read homes. And so they would just go to homes and uh, uh, took out anything that's old. Um, old vases, antique furniture, anything. They would just go uh, take them out and uh, just burn them or smash them. And uh, I remember, and this whole street was just a mess of uh, things destroyed and the people howling and the crying those homeowners and because that's what uh, uh, the red guards uh, wanted to do and uh, and everyone was asked to go over your home and just find out those old uh, items to hand it over to the authorities and I remember my, my mother was looking really hard to find something that we can consider bourgeois or consider old so she managed to find a bottle of uh, old perfume mm. to hand it over and uh, uh, cancel culture just uh, um, also they demand that you can't wear a certain hairstyle you can't wear anything that is a kind of a uh, um, fashionable 
all this is condemned, and I witness red guards cutting a uh, uh, young girl's hair off because th that girl had a hairstyle that was not approved. So, I mean, it's insane. It's absolutely madness.